Vida 1220 ni sus auspiciadores se solidarizan con las expresiones vertidas en el siguiente programa. Assalamu alaikum, welcome to another episode of Islam for Mankind coming live from La Primera 1220 and we are honored to have with us uh, both uh, our co-host and translator, Dr. Jesus Marti. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Jesus Marti. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greeting of peace for all of our radio listeners. Eh, un saludo de paz en su programa semanal Islam para la humanidad y toda la creación de Allah. And also we have our, with us our esteemed Imam Hamidullah, Imam Hatim Hamidullah of from Masjid al Haq. Imam Hamidullah, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. We have him before and we are happy to that he has some time for us uh, uh, this special moment. Imam Hamid, ha Hatim Hamidullah of Masjid al Haq, I, uh, the Islamic Center CF, downtown Orlando, is a convener of Florida Conference of uh, Muslim Americans and he is a uh, you know he lives right here in Florida and we are honored to have his presence what what did you prepare for us uh, Imam Hatim Hamidullah yes um, I had thought about the just uh, what is the overall um, um, uh, influence that's going on in the city of Orlando and around the country and the world um, in regards to the uh, slayings, the killings of the uh, individuals uh, at the uh, Pulse uh, uh, location downtown Orlando. That's the over overwhelming uh, set of circumstances that's taking place right now. It has impacted the community a great deal and also certainly especially your mosque is r is in downtown so yes. definitely you, you it is an impact on that as well yeah we're less than seven minutes from the actual site itself yeah so our hearts and prayers go go out to the family of the victims of their attack in orlando Absolutely. what's the islamic view on that what can you can you tell us what uh, what what's the islamic view people are asking and sometimes they falsely accuse islam and muslims uh, uh, when whenever something uh, terrible happened so y what how could we respond to that what is the islamic view on that? yes uh, first and foremost uh, we thank god we thank allah we say allah for his uh, mercy his forgiveness and his compassion and uh, at the end of the day everything is in his hands so uh, in regards to the muslim community we have a very large muslim community in the central florida area numbering uh, from 75 to 100,000 Muslims in the Central Florida community. Our perception uh, in regards to this particular catastrophe, which was horrible, and again, our hearts are just uh, melted because of the, uh, what has happened to these uh, innocent human beings, these citizens of the United States of America. Um, uh, we and, the, and also those individuals that were were uh, 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 affected by this, their families. You know, our hearts go out to their families, and may, may God uh, make their hearts uh, soft and, and not hardened, um, and 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 al that allow them to go through this uh, process because it's a process. Uh, uh, wherein they've had loss, uh, loss of lives and, and some of them have still have uh, uh, members of their families in the hospital um, and the trauma, uh, trauma c uh, center and, and, and some of them are uh, close to losing their lives at this time, at this very moment. Uh, so our hearts go out to them, pour out to them. Um, with that said, I'd just like to say that the Muslim community is uh, as a whole is disheartened. It is uh, is uh, very very uh, sympathetic to what has happened, and it's unfortunate that the perpetrator, uh, this killer of all of these uh, human beings, uh, has been uh, you know stamped as a Muslim. Uh, you know the simple definition of Muslim for. For, for all practical purposes, many of us already know, the li your listening audience that listen to you every week, they already know that the centermost core of Islam is peace. It comes from the word Aslama, uh, Islam. Salima means peace. 
to surrender, and it means peace. So, you know, uh, it's it's overwhelming. I, you know, there's no English words, Arabic words, Hispanic words. No words can really explain this catastrophe, which has not only affected the central Florida area and Florida itself, but the world. And so our perception, and I will give that just uh, if you had a, a question, it's no problem. We, we no, inshallah, we're going to go with the translation with your permission. And Great. And we, we continue, inshallah. Okay. Dr. Jesus Marti, if you would like to uh, go ahead and translation. Nos dice, Iman Hadim, Iman Hadim es el Iman de la Mezquita al Haq, que está en el downtown de Orlando, hermanos. Y él es también un conferencista eh, reconocido en la Florida Central. Vemos que también Iman Hadim nos está hablando, o sea, reside también en la Florida. Él nos está hablando de la influencia en general de el, del Islam y toda esta situación que ha ocurrido en la ciudad de Orlando sobre las muertes que ocurrieron a, en la discoteca Pulse en el downtown de Orlando. La mezquita de Imam Hatim está apenas a unas 6 o 7 millas de distancia de donde ocurrieron los hechos. Eh, le pregunta al hermano Rashid cuál es la percepción y cuál es la perspectiva islámica en cuanto a este tipo de incidente. Este, le dice que primero y más importante hay que darle gracias a Dios por su misericordia y por su perdón y su compasión para con todos nosotros nosotros y oramos por las almas de aquellas víctimas que fallecieron en este trágico incidente. También dice de que la eh, comunidad islámica es una comunidad de eh, bastantes proporciones en la Florida Central. También nos dice que nuestro corazón va a esas familias que eh, perdieron a estas vidas inocentes en esta catástrofe. Eh, este reza también porque Allah haga sus corazones más suaves y no los endurezca a través de este proceso. Muchas de las víctimas todavía están en los centros de trauma y en la unidad de cuidado intensivo de los respectivos hospitales en el área. Eh, la comunidad eh, islámica está descorazonada en el sentido de haber observado toda esta tragedia y un individuo, el, pepe, el perpetrador o sea, el que comi, cometió los hechos del caso este individuo pues había se identifica como musulmán nos dice Imam Hatim que el centro del de Islam nos dice a nosotros Islam viene de la palabra Islama Aslama, que es paz y paz significa también, Islam significa sometimiento, o sea, completa sumisión en paz a la voluntad de Dios. Si usted está en paz con Dios, si usted está completamente sometido a la voluntad de Dios, en un mes como este, que es el mes del Ramadán, usted no va a estar haciendo actos como ese de ese individuo que se quiso etiquetar como que era musulmán, como que era islámico. Uh, but Rashid, over in Hatim, you we, we just lost an iconic uh, figure, uh, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali. <coughs> So can you tell us what is the lessons that we can learn from this great, great champion, this great, uh, you know, iconic, uh, hist you know, that uh, leaves an impact on the whole world. Can you please give us some insight about it? Please? Yeah, many people uh, were surprised to see the outpour of the um, uh, human beings that were drawn to the soul of Muhammad Ali. Uh, the artist in the ring was also an artist and a very, very uh, scientific fighter in the ring, but he was also a fighter uh, in the public in, in regards to uh, his commitments to his religion, uh, which is El Islam, uh, which was Islam or El Islam. And uh, he stuck to his uh, gun, so to speak. He stuck to his commitment, and God blessed him. God blessed him, you, as you know, his, uh, and many people know, his, his title was taken away from him. <coughs> and uh, this was one of his at, his, at his younger, in his younger life, this was one of his major goals, was become, to become the world heavyweight champion of the world. And, uh, but because he did not want to uh, go to war, uh, not because of fear, but because of the principle of it, the Vietnam War at that time, was a war of great confusion. The reason for going into it was uh, perplexed. There, there were a lot of gray areas. Why, why were, were we going to war with Vietnam? And his statements were, um, uh, I haven't had any argument. I don't know any Vietnamese, so I don't have any uh, problems with Vietnamese. I've never met a Vietnamese, so I don't have any, I, how can I fight somebody that I don't have a, a disagreement with? And so he uh, stood his ground 
and uh, they took his title away from him from I think almost four or five years and uh, in that time he reflected on his life and he stuck to his guns and stayed with his principles you know uh, in our religion you know the prophet of Islam he said to take one life is like to take the life or to affect the life of a whole whole of humanity uh, and to save a life is like is is like unto saving the life of all of humanity so we we have very strong uh, language in the Quran and we we say that that language came from God it's not something that comes from human being it comes from God so he was beginning to learn more and more and more about his religion so I would say uh, the main lesson that we can learn from Muhammad Ali is that he was committed. He was a committed individual uh, to God and, and country and committed individual to his family. He loved his family, and a lot of people don't know he was a great family man. And um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm uh, one of the friends of his of one of his uh, of his, uh, his daughters, we have her to visit here at least uh, at least once every two years, and um, she comes and she gives lectures for our five hundred one c organization downtown uh, knowledge for living. So you know we have many many lessons. And untold you're also friends lessons. with uh, Malcolm X uh, daughter that she comes as well. So you are very acquainted with all these uh, civil rights leaders. I would call it uh, Muhammad Ali civil rights leaders because of what he stood for, of what he, he fight peacefully outside the rain and that what he left the most impact yes. per se. Yeah, he made his most I uh, heaviest impact even though he was, um, you know, most of the fighters that are out here now, they all go back to l study his methodologies inside of the ring, his strategies inside of the ring, and a lot of them try to copy them e him even today. Uh, but like you said, on the outside of the ring, you know, he uh, was a man. You know, one of the things that my father said before he passed away, uh, he told us we had I had uh, six brothers, no sisters, but six Allah. brothers. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. He said, uh, if you're gonna, if you, are, if you were gonna uh, grow up, you're a young boy, you be, you grow up to be a man, be a man. Find out what a man is and be a man. And this was is what Muhammad Ali was. Uh, he was not a kid. This is even though he told a lot of jokesters you know, jokes, and he he even had a few little magic tricks that he would use with the cards to 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 uh, have communication with the children. But at the end of the day, he was a giant among us, you know. And uh, the outpouring at his memorial, uh, all of the individuals, you wouldn't think that many of these individuals uh, really had this high regard and respect for our brother, Muhammad Ali. But he transcended uh, religious labels. He transcended a race. He trans transcended all of these uh, things that sometimes keep us in brackets or sometimes we live in bubbles away from the world. Uh, he... Um, transcended all of those uh, barriers, so to speak, and uh, many, many people loved him because of his humanity. So he was a true example of what the Muslim should be exactly. in every sense. The exactly. essence of Islam, the, you know, the caring about humanity. Absolutely. And how he deal with everything, how he was passionate and compassionate about everyone, how he was inclusive in all his dealing. Inshallah, we'll go ahead with the translation and for those who wish to join us, this is your weekly radio program, Islam for Mankind, coming live from La Primera Do Seventy. And we can be reached live at 407-343-6001. We are honored to have with us over here in the studio, Imam Hat Hatim Hamidullah of Masjid al Haq, downtown Orlando. And we have with us as well our co-host and translator, our esteemed doctor, uh, Jesus Marti. 
He's so smart. If you would like to translate, Jazakum Allahu Khairan. Wajakum. Nos dice, si quieren estar comunicarse con nosotros en vivo, lo pueden hacer a través del 407-343-6001, 407-343-6001 para las llamadas que quieran realizar. También recuerden que estamos auspiciados por el, la compañía Philly Steaks, que son los gyros y las alitas que están en el 1164 de West Osceola Parkway. Y esto está al ladito de BJ's en Kissimmee, Florida. Teléfono 407-944-4976. También tienen otras facilidades en Simpson, Simpson Road en el 2558. Kissimmee, Florida también. 407-978-6621 en esa localización. Eh, nos dice el distinguido Imam Hatim de que el otro tema que le trae, eh, nos trae a colación es el tema de Mohammed Ali. Él nos está diciendo que, cuál le pregunta al hermano Rashid, cuál es el, 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 el asunto relacionado con todo el asunto trascendental relacionado con el fallecimiento de eh, Cassius Clay, quien luego se reconoció como Mohammed Ali, eh, que este era campeón de peso completo. Él, él nos dice Imam Hatim de, de que Ali era un artista en el cuadrilátero, así como era un artista de, en, en sus relaciones y como este lidiaba con el público. Era una persona sumamente devoto a su religión, que su religión era... Eh, y continúa siendo el Islam, completa eh, sometimiento a la voluntad de Dios. Su título de campeón de peso completo le fue eh, quitado debido a que este se rehusó a participar en la guerra de Vietnam, donde este decía que no veía razones de por qué este debía participar en una guerra en donde él no tenía problemas, ni veía conflictos, ni entendía el motivo de por qué la nación se estaba envolviendo en ese conflicto bélico con este otro país, con Vietnam. Eh, su título le fue quitado por varios años de cualquier manera y vemos que nuestra religión le dice a usted de que si usted quita una vida es como si usted hubiese matado al universo completo si usted también salva una vida es como si usted salvara al universo completo cuando vemos que una persona que eh, eh, sigue al pie de la letra el lenguaje que ha sido provisto en el sagrado libro del Corán siempre se va a estar comportando adecuadamente con damas, con niños y con todo el público en general. Él era un individuo que estaba muy concentrado y muy devoto a su profesión. Era un hombre de familia. Era también, hablamos de Muhammad Ali, era un, una persona, nos dice Imam Hatim también, de que él es amigo de una de las hijas de Muhammad Ali, quien viene a hacer presentaciones a su mezquita eh, en años alternos. También nos dice de que él conoció a Malcolm X. Le pregunta al hermano Rashid de que si él conocía también a Malcolm X. Y este le dice que también. Y una de sus hijas también viene a hacer presentaciones a su mezquita eh, coincidentalmente. Este dice también Imam Hatim de que Ali dejó un gran impacto pero su mayor impacto fue fuera del cuadrilátero. Él era un artista dentro del cuadrilátero, pero también dejó sus huellas bien plasmadas fuera del cuadrilátero. Este era lo que se conoce como un verdadero hombre y caballero. Y Mamá Hattin tiene seis hermanas y su padre le decía a él que si él mirara a sus hermanas y él iba a ser un hombre y un caballero que tenía que comportarse como tal siempre a lo largo de todo el trayecto de su vida. Ali también fue criado de esa manera y él fue un gigante entre nosotros. Él trascendió las etiquetas eh, religiosas, étnicas y todo tipo de barreras. Muchas personas, el, 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 el público en general lo amaba eh, sinceramente y vemos que es un verdadero ejemplo de lo, que, de lo que debe ser un musulmán, que es una persona apasionada con sus relaciones con el público, pero siempre respetuoso con los demás. Uh, Also, for those who insist on calling the shooter, the Orlando shooter, is a Muslim, it, the fact of the matter, the Orlando shooter is as Muslim as an abortion clinic bomber is a Christian. So the shooter is an enemy of Islam, he's a traitor who have paid his way, his path to hell, not paradise for what he done. He betray his faith, he betray his country, he betray every, the humanity, he betray everything about the, this country. A Muslim, uh, another word of Muslim, man salim an nas min yadihi, uh, you know, that the, the, the people are safe from his tongue and from his hand. That is another definition of Islam, a true Islam, that someone that will bring peace, harmony, and respect 
uh, people regardless of their faith or everything. So some some people might ask, what is the Muslim position on killing all the LGBT uh, community? What's what's uh, you know this? Uh, yeah, this again, come up, you know? yeah, I, again, I, you know the the uh, there's no question in regards to our position in regards to this incident, you know. The bottom line is that these were human beings, number one. They had a particular type of lifestyle. You know, the LGBTQ community has a particular type of lifestyle. They were in their own, uh, I would say, uh, safe place that they had for themselves, carrying on their life and activities, uh, just because we as Muslims do not cater to that kind of lifestyle. We don't, we don't cater to it. It doesn't mean that we don't look at them as creatures who were created by God and Allah. We say God, Allah. Uh, just because we don't cater to the lifestyle, it doesn't mean that we should go out and kill somebody. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Uh, we don't just go around killing people. It's not our way. It's not the way of our prophet. And if you would read the Quran, uh, get a copy of the Quran, English, and we have even Spanish uh, versions of the Quran. And uh, if you would read the Quran, <laughs> then you would see how the Quran is, uh, is addressing the human spirit, uh, the human uh, intelligence, and also the human heart and soul. And you will see that this, as uh, Rashid has mentioned so clearly, that this behavior of this killer in no way reflects the lifestyle of a bona fide, a qualified Muslim, uh, because we have our Prophet Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, as our example. And so the easy, the easy litmus test of to see whether someone is a bona fide and qualified Muslim is to look at Muhammad, look at the Prophet of Islam. Look at his life, read about his life, read what he re uh, received from Almighty God Allah in the form of the Quran. And so just make the comparison. Did the prophet do something like, ever do anything like that? And this goes for everything that people do in their lives. As Muslims, we are to copy or mimic the prophet with our own intelligence being ourselves. We are not to become the prophet. We are just to follow him in his etiquettes, in his behavior, in his character. So uh, the quick litmus test is for anyone to say, okay, would the prophet do something like this? And the answer for that situation at the pulse and the, all of these is no. He would never do anything like that. Our prophet Muhammad sallam, is our example. And we hope and pray to Allah that the community is is clear on this and this guy has damaged the image of muslims uh both locally and globally uh dr jesus if you'd like to go with the translations quienes continúan llamándolo a este como musulmán este eh, tra traicionó a su fe traicionó a su nación y traicionó a la humanidad entera eh, como definición un musulmán es una persona de la cual es su, su prójimo está protegido de su lengua y está protegido de su corazón y de todas sus actuaciones y este actúa para el bienestar de su prójimo eh, cuál es el, la posición de, de del Islam, del mundo musulmán en cuanto a la comunidad LGBT ¿verdad? nos dice entonces también Imam Hatim de que eh, no hay cuestión de que la posición en cuanto al incidente eh, significa de que estas personas son seres humanos que, que son tienen un particular estilo de vida y ellos estaban en su lugar en donde ellos comparten y disfrutan de ese estilo de vida el que nosotros no seamos copartícipes de ese estilo de vida no quiere decir de que nosotros tenemos el derecho ni le concede esto tampoco 
tampoco el derecho a nadie, a ninguna persona para entonces tomar acciones y represalias e inclusive eh, atentar contra la vida de los mismos. El Corán nos dice a nosotros también de que Lidia, el Corán lidia directamente con el espíritu humano, habla también con los sentimientos y el alma del individuo hacia donde debe estar dirigido y no es nunca hacia este tipo de comportamiento. Este comportamiento de un asesino no cuadra jamás ni nunca con lo que es la definición de musulmán. Eh, vemos que si se hace una prueba del litmus, como lo dice Imam Hatim, eh, para ver al profeta Mohammed, vemos entonces de que hay una disimilidad completamente eh, eh, del, del cielo a la tierra en términos de cómo se comportaría el profeta en una situación como esta, haciendo una comparación con este asesino de la, de la ciudad de Orlando. Como musulmanes vemos que nosotros seguimos al profeta Mohammed, pero lo seguimos en sí, el sentido sí. de que nosotros hacemos lo que este haría. Nosotros no nos convertimos en el profeta y vemos también de que este jamás ni nunca hubiese hecho ni hubiese aprobado un tipo de acción ni de medida como la que tomó el individuo en la ciudad de Orlando. Imam Hatim. Islam teaches us that caring for humanity is an act of worship. The Prophet Muhammad, who is described in the Quran as a prophet of mercy, said, All creation is the family of God. And then the person most beloved to God is the one who is kind and caring towards his family. Can you please explain to, to the audience, for those who, who always try to have this double standard equate whenever the shooter is any other race they call it a deranged mm -hmm. and and sick or if uh, he happens to have an arabic name is automatic uh, a terrorist so w w we need to be uh, you know the media need to be clear to everyone to define for us clearly what is terrorism is yes. and to define for us and then refrain from calling Uh, name calling this mm -hmm. Islam. Islam has nothing to do right. with with any killing or anything from that. Islam is a, is a religion, is a peaceful religion, is a, a religion that humanity. And it is we have to challenge this racism in the media. Mm. We have to challenge this biased reporting in the media. We have to stand tall and follow the example of of Muhammad Ali. Follow mm -hmm. the be be like Muhammad Ali when he okay. stood against all this injustice and and definitely uh, definitely there is injustice in the media that is the way they report things they automatically jump jump before any investigation on and start calling this name mm -hmm. and start propagating 24 7 negative stereotype about islam and that affects all of us because uh, as martha Luther Uh, can uh, said and uh, justice anywhere is injustice everywhere so by demonizing muslim they are automatically demonizing christianity demonizing all other faith for that matter and they are you know uh, it's uncalled for mm -hmm. so what's your take on that uh, imam Hatim? yeah this is this is a direct uh, <coughs> a direct blemish on the image of muslims you know Uh, you know, before I became Muslim, I was Christian. I knew a lot, and I know, still know a lot about the Bible. And in the Bible, it says, my people are destroyed uh, for the lack of knowledge. And I think that it is a knowledge factor. You know, knowledge I is power, as they say in the educational system of the United States of America and abroad. Knowledge is power. N no knowledge is weakness. So people tend to be people who are not in the know are not know having knowledge about Islam proper, then they tend to go quickly to the weaker side. And that is the blame game to go to the blame game. So this word they use Islamist terrorists is something that was coined by someone who has it in for Islam, who has a dislike for Islam proper because they know that Islam is a moral community, uh, um, Islam is a moral lifestyle, Islam is an is a upright and righteous lifestyle. So this word Islamist terrorist, or this frame, these two words that have been put together in the media, uh, should... It's absurd, I mean... Yeah, it's absurd. It's so there the are the two uh, opposites in their definition. So terrorists is simply a person that commits terror, okay? And Islam 
is peace. So terror and peace are two opposing definitions. There's no way you can get terror out of peace. Absolutely. And, uh, and also just a verse from the Quran, Quran 5. Mm. And verse 32, chapter 5, verse 32 can dispel all this. The Quran yeah. says, whoever, you mentioned it before, I'm just repeating it for the, our audience, whoever kill a person unjustly, it is as though he has killed all mankind. Yes. And whoever save a life, it is as though he has saved all mankind. So this se- sum up the essence of Islam. Whoever kill a person unjustly, it is though he has killed all of mankind, and whoever save a life, as though he has saved all humanity. So we will go with the translation, and we go back to to your how, comment. How, yes, how uh, also Dr. Jesus. Also interjecting in there, what would be uh, the consideration there? Uh, this incident took place during the month of Ramadan. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what. Uh, the prophet, in the times of the prophet, the prophet would engage in any type of wars during, you know, justified wars during the time uh, of Ramadan. During mm-hmm. or uh, during Ramadan or not Ramadan, this is uh, uh, this is an Islamic. First of all, this guy he does not practice Islam at all. Right. Per the testimony of his wife, mm-hmm. he's a drunkard. He used to drunk. He used to go like violent in his in his ways and stuff. He has nothing to do with the religion. For them to label it as a religion, it's an insult. It's yeah. an insult to the intelligence of the viewers. Yeah. We we ask our viewers to be, uh, to be uh, you know I mean to have re- the, the media should have respect for the viewers. Mm-hmm. Sh- they should they have intelligence and when they find mm-hmm. out the truth. They will not trust mm-hmm. the media because the way they report things, the media should be unbiased, should be objective, and they are not. They are a propaganda machine for the mm-hmm. war machine. Yeah. Let's face it. They and are there, a propaganda there's machine there's for the war machine, and that's it. There's a small percentage nowadays of the media. Not all of them are yeah, not corrupt. Yeah, all of them, of you course. Know. We cannot. Uh, you yeah. Know. So, but there's a small percentage of them that have come to terms with the fact that this is ridiculous that every time something happens they tie it into islam islam is terrorist and that kind of thing and as i mentioned earlier these two terms are terms that are completely opposite of each other it all depends also who is the one who's involved in the terrorist act because they are like in the case of uh Macbeth, in the uh, bombing of the federal building of Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Mm -hmm. 98 people died. Mm -hmm. And it was considered as a a domestic situation, but then... uh, They call it domestic terrorism. Yeah, they call it domestic terrorism. But then if it's uh, someone that that is uh, related or somehow connected to the Middle East, then it's an international terrorist. Mm. (laughs) An Islamic international terrorist, yeah. That's the way it is, I'll tell you. Bueno, nos dice este Iman uh, Hatim también, de hermanos, de que esto para beneficio de la audiencia de habla hispana. Eh, el Islam nos enseña a nosotros a tener cuidado y a comportarnos adecuadamente con toda la humanidad y toda la creación. El Corán dice claramente de que toda la creación es la familia de Dios. Vemos también de que los medios de comunicación tratan de demonizar y tratan, no están claros en cuanto a qué cosa es terrorismo, que es un ataque contra civiles, contra niños y contra personas inocentes, contra damas que no están envueltos en una situación de guerra. También vemos que hay que seguir el ejemplo, nos dice este también, y vamos a de que hay que seguir el ejemplo de personas como lo fue también Mohammed Ali. Eh, vemos que el estereotipo debe eh, 24-7 de debe eh, detenerse porque al estar demonizando a los musulmanes y a los islámicos también se está demonizan, demonizando a la cristiandad también y a los uh, y a las oh, diferentes tipos de religiones eh, abrámicas eh, si hay alguien a quien se le vaya a dirigir la culpa siempre se quiere utilizar la imagen del mundo musulmán la biblia nos dice también de que nuestra gente han des, están destruyéndose eh, cita y me imagino también que la biblia o sea que este era eh, un creyente cristiano antes de convertirse al islam y dice este que la biblia cita de que mi gente se están destruyendo por su falta de conocimiento, for the lack of knowledge. Nos dice de que su eslabón más débil también es siempre el estar echándole la culpa al Islam. El Islam es una religión moral, es una religión de principios et- éticos eh, y correctos y hay oposiciones, eh, son dos puntos completamente opuestos cuando se habla de terrorista o cuando se habla de paz. Estamos hablando de dos cosas completamente disímiles. Eh, cuando vemos esto, pues son dos definiciones también completamente opuestas. ¿Quién mata a alguien? 
quien injustamente mata a toda la humanidad. Un pequeño porcentaje de los medios también está llegando a los términos para comprender este tipo de situación. Le preguntaba al hermano eh, Rashid y a Imam Hatem de que esta situación habiendo ocurrido durante el mes de Ramadán, cómo se observaba esto y que este individuo se estaba nadie, o sea, en los tiempos del profeta, el profeta Mohammed nunca realizaba guerras ni ningún tipo de situación que este estaba obligado a realizar durante un mes tan especial y tan espiritual como lo es el mes del Ramadán. Imam Hatim, bro, Rashid. Also, we thank Senator Bernie Sanders and uh, uh, also the President, uh, you know, Barack Obama for for dispelling all this misconception. For instance, just recently, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders said, we know that one hateful person that committed the atrocity in Orlando, in Orlando, not an entire people or an entire religion, more than any other people on the earth. It is the Muslim people who have been hurt by ISIS by the hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. So the Muslim population is 1.6. Just to put it in perspective, so the Muslim population is estimated to be 1.6 billion. And this ISIS, this corrupt, this de devilish, this, uh, this uh, an Islamic uh, organization, whatever, it just pop up out of nowhere because of the, uh, of the war that was created uh, and justly there it's estimated mm -hmm. to 80 to 80,000 or so so there there you have it you know i mean and as we stated clearly islam is a religion of peace a muslim is someone that the people are safe from his tongue and from his hand and right now we are in ramadan and even if the people you know insult you you're not supposed to 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 insult them back right. so uh going back to imam hatim can you please tell us some of the essence or the moral uh, benefit of uh, what is the benefit of ramadan why do we fast and yeah. is there any benefit on, on, the, on the, the the specific verse in the quran that <coughs> talks about um the quran it's uh is in surah 2 chapter 2 el, uh, el baqara ayat number 183 where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and this is the Arabiya and I'll, I'll uh, translate it quickly Allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun and uh, Allah he mentions that he's making a call to believers people who believe in Islam, people who believe in God, who believe, who love God, who love to answer the call of God. And God is calling in this verse. He's saying, yeah, this is like an exclamation. Yeah, ayyuhal ladhina. Oh, all of you who are believers. Kutiba uh, alaykum siyam, meaning that fasting is a prescription upon all of you meaning that if you are well and uh, alive and well in this month that you should fast in this month and that he goes on to say that there were people who who fasted before you did and we are acknowledging this and this with our association with the ahl al-kitab the people of the book the good people uh, that follow isa alayhi salam the good people that follow musa alayhi salam peace be upon both of them that they you they fa used to fast and they still fast in these days and times So Allah is acknowledging the fact that he had established fasting in previous religions, previ uh, religions that were established before Islam came. So Kamma, like what are like others who came before you, the Christians and the Jews. And the, what is the purpose of the fast? The main purpose of the fast is la'allakum tatakun, so that we may come to know, that we may come to learn something that is called taqwa, Taqwa is the pro proper reverence, the proper love and uh, commitment uh, in, the, in the heart and the soul for God, that we want to be closer to God. We, everyone should want to be close to God. So this month is a month that Allah says uh, that we must learn to be close to God, and by that route we will attain uh, righteousness and goodness in our souls and actions. Uh, Dr. Jesus Marti, 
Saroli, my pleasure. Nos dice también, este, le, nos está hablando el hermano Rashid de que el senador Bernie Sanders y el presidente Obama han disipado la ignorancia en cuanto, en, en cuanto a los verdaderos propósitos de la población musulmana y de su credo. También la población musulmana es cerca de 6 billones de personas cuando el, esos grupos terroristas de ISIS están estimados en aproximadamente solo unos 80 mil individuos. El musulmán es alguien cuyo vecino está a salvo siempre de este y este va a protegerlo y va a ayudarlo y va a tener siempre compasión del mismo. ¿Qué es Ramadán? Se le pregunta a Iván Hatim y este nos dice en el sura número 2 a la Aleya 1.82 en la versión español y citamos del Sagrado Libro. Creyentes, se os ha prescrito el ayuno al igual que se les prescribió a los que os precedieron. Ojalá tengáis temor de Allah. Vemos que también Iván Hatim entonces nos dice de que ese, ese ayuno que se nos ha prescrito es persiguiendo lo que se llama el Al-Kitab. El Al-Kitab lo que significa es que tengamos taqwa para la gente al Kitab significa para la gente, esto va dirigido a la gente del libro y significa de que Allah eh, también reconoce de que él, él ha establecido el ayuno para religiones previas como lo fue el, el Torah, cuando aparece en el Torah para la religión judía. El propósito es para que nosotros vengamos a tener conocimiento, sabiduría y aprendamos y estemos más cerca de Dios, de Allah. El, este mes también es un mes en donde debemos estar mucho más devotos y mucho más cercanos a ese Dios Padre Todopoderoso, ese Padre Amado que ha sido el creador de todo el universo. Uh, Bro Rashid, just a couple of here. As we Amen. mentioned, there is no such thing as radical Islam is a false theory proven by sociology and theology to be wrong. It is racist, it is uh, unnecessary and does not serve any purpose. So for we are in Ramadan and Ramadan teach us to be merciful, teach us to treat the ignorant with us, even the ignorant with respect, teach us to be not to repel evil with goodness. And uh, this is one of uh, as well the, the moral uh, uh, that we learn from this lesson. We learn to persevere, we learn to be patient and we have to be patient when we hear a president hopeful using all this rhetoric mm -hmm. to divide us as American. Mm -hmm. What makes this country great, and this is indeed this is a great country to live in, mm -hmm. it's the coexistence of all the people that come in from all races. And by the way, this is the country of the immigrant. This country start as the people fleeing to, to, to exercise their right to, 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 to liberty, their right to freedom, mm -hmm. their right to practice their religion, and Uh, you know, someone that say they want to make America great by taking away this element, this successful element. It, it, it is, uh, and he's using Hitler as an example. So the people, we, we ask all people of conscience, we ask all people to wake up. This is no joke. Yeah. He is another Mussolini or another Hitler. Mm. This is no joke. And uh, by, 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 by letting someone of that mentality to divide this great nation it is uh, it is an uh, it is inhumane it is you know our conscience is put to 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 question mm -hmm. so we people of faith or no faith should come together this is the time that we should all put our resources together to rebuild the trust to mm -hmm. to to work together to the common goal is to 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 live peacefully mm -hmm and coexist peacefully as we did before. You know, an, an example of this radio station is a Christian radio station that allow a Muslim uh, people to have on a weekly basis a program. This is what I call the essence of, of, of coexistence. And we go along our neighbors, we have our neighbor, Jewish neighbors and Christian neighbors and all the other people of faith. There is indeed, there is no need to be You know, you can have your your faith, you can have your differences, mm -hmm. and we can peacefully live, uh, coexist together. It is a proven fact. In matter of fact, Islam say, "Lakum dinukum waliyadin." You have your religion, and I have mine. There is no compulsion in religion. What what uh, what what do you say about this, uh, Imam Hatim? Uh, can you? Yes, you know, I was just listening uh, at the you know statements that you were making that some of the 
uh, individuals that are running to become president of the United States of America, uh, that office of president is the office, you know, uh, of, a, of a person that has high self-esteem, high morale, high morals, and very astute, intelligent person. Uh, the person that sits in that chair must ha have in mind the uh, safety and security of every individual that is within uh, the confounds or the confinements or the boundaries of the United States of America and even beyond for humanity. Uh, but one statement from another of the candidates uh, was very, very profound, and I wanted to share that with the uh, uh, listening audience today. Uh, she said, the attack on any American is an attack on all Americans. That's just correct. Yes, sir. and so we want to pe people to understand that we are proud to be in the United States of America, and this country has fought long and hard uh, both in the inner cities and also with the government and security uh, forces. And we'd like to express our appreciation uh, that, uh, for, for the infrastructure of the city of Orlando infrastructure from the mayor, the police department, the county mayor, uh, and also the police uh, who were there on, on, with boots on the ground to bring an end to that situation. The first responders. Yeah, yeah those first responders. Very, very, uh, uh, these people trained for these things, the and a lot of times they, they were not really, read, really ready for this kind of situation, uh, but it caught them off guard, and, and their, uh, I would say their training uh, clicked into focus, and, and, and they were blessed to handle that situation uh, as soon as they possibly could. Yeah, so, yeah, so the police department, the doctors at the hospital, the and, nurses. Uh, there is 30% of them Muslims. They were, you know, yeah. uh, helping people. Yeah. So, they, you know, yeah. this idea of, uh, you Many know, of the doctors were Muslims. Many of, uh, of course, you yeah, know, definitely, absolutely. you know, I mean, uh, we, we will go to the translation, inshallah, with Dr. Jesus, and we continue our conversation. This is your weekly radio program, Islam for Mankind, that we're just having a casual uh, conversation today we're discussing the life and legacy of uh, Muhammad Ali we're discussing Ramadan we're discussing what happened in Orlando another uh, tragedy happened just uh, yesterday that uh, mm. a kid has been snatched away what alligator yeah. our hearts and prayers goes to their family Absolutely. as well so so there you have it, uh, Dr. Jesus Marci. Certainly, my pleasure. Nos dice también, este, Imam Hatim, eh, está hablando el hermano Rashid de que no existe tal cosa como Islam radical. Que el Ramadán nos enseña a nosotros que tenemos que ser misericordiosos y no ser ignorantes. Que tenemos que aprender a ser pacientes. El candidato a, hay can, el candidato a presidente utiliza una retórica sumamente negativa en este respecto. Y no reconoce lo que es el derecho a la libertad y entre ellos también el derecho a la libertad de religión. Utiliza términos y retórica como ejemplo de en el caso de Hitler y también este también eh, nos dice también que tiene el potencial de ser un otro Benito Mussolini u otro Hitler. Nuestra conciencia viene entonces en, en, en cuestión. Hay unos tiempos en que tenemos que ser pacíficos y no tenemos que eh, eh, tener ningún tipo de diferencias unos contra otros. Un ejemplo de esto es esta misma estación de radio que permite que los musulmanes coexistamos y compartamos a la misma vez que también estamos compartiendo, compartiendo con otras denominaciones y con el público en general. Como ustedes ven también, eh, ustedes tienen en el Corán, dice... Tú tienes tu religión y nosotros tenemos la nuestra y hay que tener respeto de ambas. Y Manhattan también entonces nos dice de que la oficina del presidente es una oficina que tiene que ver con una oficina de una persona que tiene que tener una alta estima, muchos principios morales, uno, un alto concepto de la moral y tiene que ser un individuo sumamente astuto. Este tiene que tomar en consideración a todas las personas de América y no solamente las personas de América, sino la humanidad entera. 
eh, nos repite también lo que dijo el presidente o expresidente donde decía que un ataque contra cualquier americano es un ataque contra los Estados Unidos de América. Él le da las gracias a la infraestructura de la ciudad de Orlando, al alcalde y a todo el personal que estuvo presente allí, a los sheriffs de Orlando y a la policía de Orlando que estuvieron presentes y tomaron acción para poder neutralizar al asaltante en este caso, eh, el departamento de la policía en general. Uh, Rashid, uh, we have signal that we have two minutes left. Uh, we have signal that we have two minutes, uh, so the show is coming to close. Uh, like I said, we, we are very thankful and grateful to have with us Imam Hatim uh, from downtown Orlando, uh, in, uh, Masjid al Haq. And, uh, you know, this is a great, great uh, opportunity, inshallah. So, can you give us a closing remark on what we spoke about, uh, inshallah? Yes, in general. Uh uh, I would like to just give a quote from the, a statement from the Quran, the English version of it. Allah said he created us tribes and families and tribes and nations. You know, we are people of different denominations, different backgrounds, different languages, different colors and everything. But the, one of the purposes, as he says, that he created us is so that we could, uh, not for us to despise one another, but so that we could get to know one another. And it is in getting to know one another that makes life much better. Uh, Dr. Jesus Marti, can you go ahead with the translation? Certainly, sure. my pleasure. Le damos muchas gracias también a Imam Hatim por haber estado con nosotros en esta semana y en sus eh, declaraciones finales este nos dice, trae una cita del Corán donde dice, Alá creó a todo el ser humano, a la raza humana de tribus y de naciones para que se conocieran unos a otros, diferentes naciones y colores, con el propósito de que se respeten y que se lleguen a conocer unos a los otros respetándose y viviendo armoniosamente, no para vivir de una forma irrespetuosa y de una forma desdeñadora, al contrario vemos entonces hermanos que le damos las gracias por su atención a este programa semanal Islam para la humanidad y toda la creación de Allah los vemos entonces la semana próxima en otro programa de Islam para la humanidad Rajit we thank Radio La Primera 1220, we thank Dr. Imam Hatim, we thank uh, Dr. Jesus, we thank our audience for tuning into your mm, Islam for Mankind, you, and you'll find the recording of this at rashidm.blogspot.com. Salamu alaikum, greeting of peace to everyone. Jazakumullah. La Primera 1220, ni sus auspiciadores.